And we are rolling on November 30th in Communication 104, where we're learning to become master debater. And today, we are looking at the question of ban all semi-automatic weapons, or number four in our list. And we'll first hear from Nilu. 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 Sorry, Nilu. Okay. Nilu. Who will be on the government or affirmative side? And for the opposition will be Mr. Jonathan Bender. And we, our timer today is Mr. Salehi. Rock and roll, sir. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nina Barshankor, and the topic that we'll be discussing today is that this house would ban all automatic weapons. Criteria. If my debate prevails over that of my oppos opposition and result that the ban of all automatic weapons, including semi-automatic weapons, I will have won this debate. Definitions. This house, when addressed in my debate, I am referring to the United States. All, every member or individual component. In this debate, when referring to all weapons, I will refer to both automatic and semi-automatic weapons. Automatic weapons are self-loading and able to fire continuously until ammunition is, is exhausted. What is the problem? The rate of fire for automatic and semi-automatic weapons is horrendous. The rate of fire for the M16 rifle, which is an automatic weapon used by the Marine Corps, shoots out... 700 to 900 rounds per minute. The rate of a for fire of an AR-15, which is a semi-automatic weapon, is open for civilian use and it shoots out at 45 rounds per minute. Automatic weapons and semi-automatic weapons allow for assailants to harm a large group of people in an instant. In October of this year, William Johnson, a doctoral student at George Mason University, University stated during an interview with CNN that crimes often get more serious when the shooter is given the capability of killing more people. Moore later states, I know people will say that guns don't kill people, people kill people, but if we provide people regular access to assault weapons and guns with higher capacities, which both are so ubiquitous, we are going to see more of these mass casualties. How big is the problem? The United States has, a largest, has had the largest mass shootings in, in history in the past two years. According to the Washington Post, on October 2017, Stephen Paddock was able to fire off 1,100 rounds during his killing spree, injuring 500 people and killing 58 individuals in Las Vegas. He killed 58 people in the time period of 11 minutes. That's roughly five people per minute. Paddock's weapon was deemed to be legal as they complied with government regulations. The weapons authorities had uh, confiscated were, were of semi-automatic stature, but had accessories to Im imitate rapid fire that one would get with automatic weapons. On November 2017, Devin Kelly had killed 26 people and injured 20 others with his open fire in a church in Texas. The weapon used was a Ruger AR-556, which is a variant of the AR-15 model. Why do we have the problem? The United States banned automatic machine guns in 1986. However, the ban had many loopholes. Guns, guns that were registered and manufactured between the dates of 1934 and 1986 were grandfathered in and to this day remain legal. The 1986 ban as listed on the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, this ban was enacted to prohibit the transfer or possessions of machine guns. Exceptions were made for government agencies and those lawfully possessed before the effective date of prohibition. In, in an article published by the KTVB on October 1st, states that the ATF, as of April 2017, had a little over 630,000 machine guns registered in the National Firearms Act registry. According to a Forbes article, the law uh, Vegas massacre gun violence, the author explained how semi-automatic weapons can easily be manipulated to imitate the effects of automatic, an automatic weapon would impose. According to the same article, Webster, a researcher on gun policy, states that while sales of automatic weapons are fairly restricted, Paddock was able to shoot out as many, shoot as many people as he did with a semi-automatic weapon that could have been easily converted to automatic with the weapon, with the kits that he bought, which made him legal. What is the solution? Mandate a federal law that bans the sale possession of both automatic and semi-automatic weapons. Senator Dianne Feinstein has proposed a bill that, sa that states, it shall be unlawful for any person to import, sell, manufacture, transfer, or possess in or affecting interstates or foreign commerce, trigger tank, a bump, bump fire, 
modifier, device of any part, combination, parts, component, device, and attachments or accessories. In a CNN article published October 5, 2017, this states that this bill closes loopholes that gun manufacturers have used for decades now. It will ban buff fire stocks, such as the one used in the Las Vegas massacre, and other devices that will allow for conversions of semi-automatic weapons to fire at automatic rates. The intent of this bill is to keep assault weapons out of the hands of civilians. Will the solution work? In 1996, Australia had a massive massacre in which 35 people with 23 were injured because of a man opened fire with a semi-automatic weapon. In result, Prime Minister John Howard pushed forward to prohibit, prohibit automatic and semi-automatic weapons. With the implementation of prohibiting these weapons, he also instituted a gun buyback program, which resulted in roughly 600,000 weapons within the first few months. Form as well as former Prime Minister Howard explains in an article by the New York Times during 2015 that the availability of these weapons is what increases the chances of people in a moment of madness to want to kill in large amounts. What are the advantages to my proposal? With these weapons not having availability to the civilian public, it should lead to a decrease in the amount of casualties and gun violence. The theory being that without automated weapons that have high rates of fire per minute being off the market, streets will be safer. Banning these weapons it would leave assailants with only other options of using standardized guns. The ban would have incorporated the unavailability to add accessories as these items were incorporated. That's time. No. Within the ban, which inevitably leads to less people being dead. Within the past two months, there have been record-breaking mass shootings that have injured roughly 520 people. All balances, which outweighs. Automatic weapons are not needed. No sane person should need a weapon that shoots 50 or more rounds per minute. There's no real purpose for automatic and semi-automatic weapons on a civilian level, especially with the ability to buy a standard gun for hunting and or safety purposes. I now stand over for cross-examination and point of clarification. Very good. Thank you very much. Stand within, very close to each other like you like each other, please. Thank you. Okay, I, I need to adjust the camera because you're tall. Okay, good. Okay, start this, yeah. You know, this I know, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, but it's two minutes for process. Go. All right, so yes or no. Do you believe that citizens of the United States have the right to revolve against the government following a long train of abuses or wrongful legal infringement or seizure as mentioned in the Declaration of Independence <laughs> and by Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> yes or no? I don't think that has anything to do with the topic of our debate as it's talking about semi-automatic and automatic weapons. Um, a, revolt, a revolt doesn't really pertain to this matter, so my opinion is actually irrelevant in this case. So they do or they don't? <laughs> um, I would say under... Yes or no? Oh my God. Okay, yes. Look at look at the audience, <laughs> not at her. Okay, You're that, trying to persuade us. Okay. Okay. With that stated, currently in Spain, there is a big issue with Catalonia and trying to secede. According to a 2017 economics article, Catalonia's parliament declares independence. Spain imposes direct rule. The Spanish government is using force to withhold the succession. Thus, they feel in Catalonia that's unfair. So, if the U.S., if say a party took control of all three branches of government and they were into, like, tyrannical rule, how would the U.S., if they don't have arms that compete, such as automatic, as you said, the military could have, how would citizens revolt? Or Again, this is all a hypothetical, because the U.S. would never be in this type of situation. We were a, built on a democracy, whereas Spain was built on dictatorship, and they had a dictatorship until 1978, I believe. Um, so I don't think a situation like this would ever occur, especially with the... the branches of government we have now because they all check one another and wouldn't allow one to overpower another, especially with government agencies such as the Department of, uh, Department of Justice and um, Veteran Affairs and all this other stuff. Okay, one more question. So you stated that law enforcement and military personnel can use and own automatic weapons, which mean that you support some use of automatic weapons. So do you oppose banning all automatic weapons, as the problem is, or no? Well, as always, bans come with exclusions, as, as they have before, and that's fine. <laughs> Just a point of clarification, did, did you mean exclusions for the military and police, or...? Did well, like all the other bans, like with <laughs> Diane... You Diane meant for Diane. civilian use, yeah, right? Yeah, for civilian use. Okay, just so we're clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whatever you're just, no, no, he's ready. Start the time. Good. Go. All right, so I am arguing in the opposition that government will ban all automatic weapons.
weapons. I win this debate if I can prove that automatic weapons are necessary for military competitiveness, as well as automatic weapons are necessary to sustain our nation. I agree with my opponent's definitions. I want to elaborate that automatic is both semi and fully automatic weapons. So firearms, what's the problem? Firearms are the most common tool used for murder and suicide in the United States. According to a 2016 New York Times article titled U.S. Murder Surge in 2015 FBI Finds, firearms were used in three quarters of all murders in that year. A 2017 section from American Journal of Public Health titled Handgun Legislation and Changes in Statewide Overall Suicide Rates by Michael Anastas declared that firearms account for about half of all suicides in the United States. Another problem is people who have mental health issues or records of violence continually gain access to firearms. There is no psychological evaluation for firearm purchase process, even in gun control states such as California. Jeffrey Swanson, a psychiatrist at Duke University, mentioned in 2017 Washington Post article that most people who commit uh, gun-related homicides did not begin with that instance about the history of abuse, assault, or other harmful behavior. If these people did not acquire guns, violence rates would be reduced. Violence rates would be reduced. Also, increased gun control measures have not impacted the number of people killed by gunshot necessarily. In 2013, the California State Legislature passed Assembly Bill 48, which illegalized the manufacturing, distribution, and lending or selling of really capacity magazines. Okay, chill. This has had little effect, according to the Los Angeles Times homicide report, as homicide, firearm homicide rates have maintained between 400 and 600 since 2009. According to 2015, the active shooter report from the NCJRS, the annual number of active shooter incidents has actually increased since 2000 to 20 in 2015. Also, the amount of privately owned firearms in the United States is probably large due to the ease of accessibility. In 2017, a CNN article titled How U.S. Gun Cultures Compare with the World in Five Charts declares that 48% of the world's civilian-owned guns are in the United States. One major problem with banning all automatic weapons is that the United States military personnel would be at a huge disadvantage. If other countries' militaries utilize automatic weapons, our military would not be able to match the firepower with non-automatic weapons as the rate of fire is much lower, as my opponent described. Limiting civilian accessibility to automatic weapons while allowing military and law enforcement personnel to have these weapons would violate the unknown or unlisted revolutionary right to dismember or overthrow the government, as Abraham Lincoln mentioned in his first inaugural address, which is also brought up in the Declaration of Independence. By disallowing civilian access to weapons comparable to those necessary for military operation, the government would have the ability to take complete control over our country. So how big is the problem? Death by firing is a large issue. According to the 2015 Center for Disease Control Report, suicides were responsible for 22,018 or 61% of <coughs> firearm-caused deaths. In 2017, the National Incident Criminal Background Check System report shows that over 27 million reports were initiated proving that firearms are accessible and still desired. So why do we have the problem? Our firearm purchasing process allows people who are unfit to own firearms to legally obtain automatic weapons. Many states do not require a universal background check on firearm purchases. According to a 2017 Giffords Law Center report, only eight states in D.C. require this. The background check also does not require a mental health evaluation. What's the solution? The solution is to strengthen the background check process for all firearm purchases, including automatic and non-automatic firearms. To accomplish this, the firearm purchasing process that is currently used in California will be adopted nationwide, including universal background checks. This will be enacted immediately at the little cost of taxpayers, as this will become the responsibility of the firearms dealer or seller who must abide by the regulations or lose their dealer's license, which would push them to an employment. In a 2017 piece, Handgun Legislation and Changes in Statewide Overall Suicide Rates from the American Journal of Public Health, Experts found that states which enacted both a 10-day waiting period and background check requirement for firearm purchases saw a reduced firearm suicide rate. In addition, annual psychological evaluations conducted by practicing psychiatrists will become required immediately as part of the background check process. Costs will be subsidized by government tax rates aimed at the psychiatrist. Next, we will create a nationwide ban on high-capacity magazines similar to the one currently in state in California. This will reduce the capabilities of all weapons, not just automatic, and therefore have an effect on the casualties. My main solution is to encompass all of this in a streamlined licensing program. In order to purchase firearm, one must obtain a license that requires in-person coursework, an in-person weapon safety demonstration test, and a mental health evaluation every year. Those who wish to purchase a firearm will be responsible for the cost similar to that of the driver's license requirements. To enforce this on current firearm owners, a license will be required at the point of purchase for ammunition and shooting ranges. This would cost nothing to enforce. There will be a five-year mandatory minimum sentence for possession of firearm without the described license. 
Will the solution work? Yes. Increased vetting for firearm ownership falling into the mentioned licensing program will keep firearms out of the hands of inadequate owners. A 2015 study from Applied Economics mentions that during the Brady Act years, where background checks were required on all gun purchases, gun-related murder rates were 85% lower. Targeting who can own a gun rather than what gun someone can own will allow for citizens to maintain their ability to revolve against the corrupt and automatic firearm toting government. Current firearm owners would abide by the license requirement to avoid jail time, purchase previously illegal weapons, and to purchase ammunition. Suicide rates would decrease due to a mental health evaluation, which may flag those who need help. Mass shootings would also decrease due to a nationwide ban on high pass magazine. What are the advantages? Firearm license owners would have full access to currently banned guns, which would spark purchases to have a positive effect on the economy. Mass shootings incidents would decrease because those showing possible signs of this capability will be flagged by the mental health evaluation process. Suicide rates would also decrease due to the mental health requirement, identifying the preventing at risk people from obtaining guns. And this does not infringe on the Second Amendment. This by far outweighs the cost of creating a program and would save lives. I now stand open for cross examination. Points of clarification. Cross start. By the way, uh, for the future reference, not that there aren't going to be any for you, wear a darker shirt. Okay. You're, you're blending with the white. How do you believe that these new implementations and regulations for automatic firearms would be any different from the ones that we already have? Um, currently, as I stated in my brief, that there's no psychological evaluation, and only eight states plus DC require a universal background check. We also don't have any required coursework, which would also take up more time, which in effect would mimic a 10-day waiting period that only is present in some states such as California. Therefore, it's completely different as none of these, act, like most of these do not exist and none of them exist together currently. Okay. How do you believe that reinstating automatic weapons with a rate of fire of 700 to 900 would be beneficial for the public? I, I believe that people have, especially if they pass the license requirement, it means they pose very little threat, if any, to our society, even more less than someone who owns, say, a shotgun now that is non-automatic. Therefore, I think they'd have the freedom to choose whether they want an automatic rifle or semi-automatic, and it would not be dangerous. Um, how do you believe that annual evalu evaluations would be mandated and people would be going on a regular basis? Um, as I omitted in, from my brief, just due to time constraints, so I think annually, in order to purchase guns, you'll have to have our ammunition and to use them as shooting ranges, you will have to have a current license. So therefore, their guns, after, say, even 10 years, ammunition becomes irrelevant and no longer works. Then after 10 years, those who don't even abide will no longer have guns that work because they don't have ammunition. But in order to mandate it, psychiatrists would create a standardized test and a standardized evaluation that would be used for all. Um, but you do know tests. people do rely on standardized tests. And Look at the audience, not It's not a standardized test that someone takes. It is a standardized like a rubric for evaluation by the psychiatrist. Thank you very much. Uh, my rebuttal. Rebuttal. Two minutes for rebuttal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The United States has already banned some automatic weapons. The only problem with this ban is that it has loopholes that were not taken into account during the time it was written. A federal ban on automatic weapons has already been processed. So as my opposition can continually argue that it, it, is, it is an essential to the fundamental rights to allow people to own these weapons, please remember that for world-renowned Dr. Moore stated that allowing people to have access to weapons will result in more seeing more of these mass casualties. Sure, the tests John wants to implement sound great. However, will these tests and evaluations take into account a moment of rage that Dr. Moore has expressed concerns over? Since the ban for automatic weapon automatic machine gun weapons was passed in 1986, many manufacturers found loopholes within the ban and were able to create legal semi-automatic weapons. However, these semi-automatic weapons have had accessories that would allow for them to imitate the rapid fire one would get with an automatic weapon, thus leading us to higher rates of injuries and death. Banning these weapons will not dissolve gun violence or even stop mass shootings. However, it will make it harder for assailants to perpetrate an attack and lead to less casualties. What was the time on that? One eleven. One eleven. Just a minute, please. The second, please.
Um, just a reminder, I guess it's been a while since we've met, but uh, in the first meeting we went over the four steps of refutation. Uh, John said there are a lot of suicides. I disagree. Because we're talking about automatic weapons, not handguns. Therefore, his arguments are irrelevant. Okay? That's the kind of thing I was looking for. Okay? Four steps of refutation. Everyone listen to that, right? We're learning the four steps of refutation. Thank you. Begin with your refutation, sir. All right. So, my opponents unsuccessfully attempts to take away your freedom from a tyrannical government through the ability to evolve, as well as fails to address the number one cause of firearm related death, suicide. I think this is wrong and that all firearm deaths are real problems. According to a 2016 CDC report, the mass shooting issue that my opponent focuses on accounted for less than 1% of all firearm-related deaths. The year PBS dubbed the year of mass shootings, 2015, the year I just referenced, encompassing the Charleston Church shooting, San Bernardino attacks, and more accounted for less than 1% of firearm-caused deaths. In that same year, suicides accounted for over 61% of firearm-related deaths, making the firearm acquisition process the true problem behind all of these. My opponent also argues solely against the banning of automatic weapons, not including non-automatic weapons. I said earlier, I think that the real problem of government of death has to do with all implications. With suicides only needing one bullet and one pull to trigger, my opponent's solution would have no impact. Thus, it seems as if my opponent is encouraging an extremely strong government. Therefore, in opposition tiring, one must seek a civilization that truly has respectful authority to stand up. The solution to ending gun violence is not to sacrifice our republic, nor give up the ability to protect our rights. Is to install a licensing process that confirms a citizen's ability to safely own a firearm without posing a threat to others or themselves. With my solution, suicides would decrease as they are identified in the gun purchasing process. The ability to revolve will persist and therefore prevail our great country to hundreds of more years of prosperity. Therefore, you should vote in opposition of banning all automatic weapons and against the making of an all too powerful government. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. The debate is now concluded, and now it's time for the judges to do their job. Thank you, sir. And we will try to do this. What's the thing? How does it can I do a, can I take a few questions and comments from people? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Can you um, collect them back there for me? I want to come over here. Take five minutes for discussion. Yeah. Okay, five minutes for discussion. Good. Uh, just a reminder, you need to put in government or opposition down there at the line, or at least somebody's name or something under decision. I can figure it out by the points, but, you know, let's fill them out right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. If you haven't filled out the rest of your ballots, please do so now. And, by the way, as you bring them in, will you have them all facing the same way so that it goes faster, please? Okay.
Do I have all the ballots? Do I have all the ballots? The decision was 8 to 10. 8 to 10. It was close in favor of the opposition that we should not ban all automatic weapons. We have a short discussion period time, and we'd like to have not the same comments repeated. So a proponent for why, let's start with the winner. Uh, why did you vote for the opposition? Who can articulate why they felt the opposition was victorious? Okay, Sarah, Emily, anybody? Jesus? Okay. <laughs> Go. So, hi, I'm Daniel. Hi, I'm Daniel. Daniel. So, the first thing you see when you see this topic is ban all automatic weapons, which is pretty open-ended, and for Neela, she had to really like meet a very hard burden of proof. So, the way Jonathan framed the debate, I think, it seemed the victorious way, because nobody's going to ban all, all MAC weapons, of course. And then, so he shifted the problem from, let's say, just automatic weapons to the greater problem of gun violence, which gave him the freedom to use his tyrannical government argument, which I found crazy at first, but then, within the frame of the debate, it really shifted it towards me. So you found that persuasive. Let's take the other side. Uh, Nilu uh, had uh, eight people that liked her. Um, why did you feel we should ban all automatic weapons? Please stand up and say why. Yes. <laughs> Were you on her side? Yeah. Okay, who is on Nilu's side? Please, thank Hi, you. Hi, I'm Armand. Hi, Armand. Um, so I think Nilu did a good job uh, at setting up the model and one thing that I didn't see uh, John do is um, when he was addressing the uh, automatic weapons versus uh, non-automatic weapons uh, regarding the military, Nilu had stated that this would not affect the military, but right. John did not acknowledge. He ignored that. Yeah. yeah. Which was if she said the military and the police would still get them, and, and she, she chose to ignore that and make a straw man argument. Okay, another argument in favor that you like very much from uh, Mr. Bender. Okay, um, I basically name Brandon. Hi. Hi, Brandon. How you doing? Um, no, I like how he basically, even though it may be a fallacy, but he kind of did appeal to emotion in a way, saying that she's going to take away your freedom from a, like a tyrannical government. I felt like that's going to settle in with the audience, mm -hmm. even though it may be a little uh, deceitful. But I don't know. I kind of liked it. So. So you're gonna, you're gonna. I'm gonna get. He knows how to play. You're, you're, you're gonna get your automatic weapon out and save democracy. <laughs> okay. Gil, uh, do you want to take the other I, side for knee no, loose? Stand up, and say, say, stand up, please, to speak. Gil Dembo. Hi, Gil Dembo. I, I think both of the hands out of your pocket. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> both of the debaters should have indicated the difficulty and the political pushback on both sides of uh, the, uh, especially the, how can I say, the uh, possibility of banning all automatic weapons. Yeah. There, there, there's a lot of political uh, how can I say, uh, strength on the gun side. Yeah, uh, tear it from my cold, dead hand. <laughs> yeah, Carlton Hester said. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, I asked for a comment in favor of Nilu's side. This is an oral communication class, please. Hello. One more in the room. One more and we have to move on. Thank you. I'm going to make a co one comment then. Okay, yes. What's your name? Jared. Hi, Jared. Um, so I thought you guys both did a really good job. Uh, what I um, especially liked about Neelu's argument is a lot easier to follow. There was like an equal amount of information and evidence on both sides, but I think what you lacked, John, was just... Um, it was coming so fast that like there was no real emphasis on like how those connections and those links were made between your evidence and your reasoning. And uh, I'm sure it was in there somewhere, but I just felt like there was more impact on the arguments that Nilu was making. And uh, yeah, I think on both sides, uh, the rebuttals were a little weaker, but uh, I think it just had to do with like the way you guys were defining your terms and like the agreements between those terms. So I felt like if you guys did that better, it might have been a more engaging debate, I think. Good, thank you. Let me make a couple of quick comments about the debate. You see, we had the debate, we were, we were asked for a very narrow debate to just talk about automatic weapons only, because we had other debates on other weapons. And uh, uh, our opponent here, uh, Mr. Jonathan Bender, decided I, there's no way I can win just talking about automatic weapons. I need to expand the debate and talk about suicides from all guns and things like that. But if we had the very narrow debate of just talking about only automatic weapons, it would have been a very different debate, right? And uh, so that, that's the first comment I would make. The second comment I would make is, on your cross-examination, uh, you guys had some good, opening, interesting questions, but do follow up on them. Don't let the other side just go on and, and answer and answer and answer and say, thank you, and, or follow up and say, wait a minute, you know, did the study really say that, or that kind of thing. And then finally, as I've said till I'm blue in the face, let's remember the four steps of refutation. And so we give the people a real reason for voting for us, and we refute the other side because, you know, that's what we say. Jonathan said, I disagree because therefore, and therefore, as always, you should ban all automatic weapons, right? I think that uh, I will just close on Gil's comment, and that is the, I think the best argument that uh, Jonathan could have brought up is workability, uh, is that, you know, this all sounds good on paper, but, you know, Americans love their guns. And if you think, you know, a couple of pointed, pointed head legislators are going to pass a ban and everyone's going to walk into City Hall with their guns, dream on. Thank you very much. Let's get the next group up quickly, quickly, quickly. Move on, yeah. Thanks. There was a, a court decision last week where the Supreme Court upheld it, Professor. Yes, okay, I, 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 I'm multitasking, but I know, keep talking, Gail. The state of Maryland had yeah. a gun control law that uh, restricted the automatic weapons, and the uh, Supreme Court uh, approved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to take a long time. And they approved it, Gil, but you know, you and I know that you can go out to your machine shop and fashion... Right, with a phantom gun. And fashion a uh, workaround in, in 30 minutes, so... Okay, thank you so much. And now I'm going to... I'm going to just do something very safe. I'm going to stop...